movies and cartoons and comics and uh, radio interviews and Fox News and uh, books, you know, popular culture, let's call it. The Arab and the Muslim was set up, right, as a certain type of person. Everybody thinks the same. They all share these values. And you know what some of them are, right? They love violence, they're backwards, they don't trust women, um, they're authoritarian, right? Probably most of you know what those, that little picture is. So in my, my argument is that if September, if the 911 attacks had been committed by, say, I don't know, some other people, those people individually would have been held responsible. Timothy McVeigh. But because they were done by Arabs and Muslims, then all Arabs and Muslims had to pay for this. Because they were seen as one solitary, <coughs> locked up people, you know, who don't have their own minds, who don't have independent ways of thinking. So to me, so the book is based on this idea that what happened to Arab and Muslim during the September 11th is about the social construction. It is not about the and you can see this going out with the Fort Hood thing, too, which I will mention at the beginning because I've already referred to the word piece on that. Um, so, so I'll just mention a few, I just have a few government quotes here and there to answer the question, uh, what, was the federal government responsible uh, during this period? Did it, what, what kind of uh, atmosphere did it set up? Well, um, I argue in the book that the members of the Bush administration were primary instigators of the social climate that held Arabs and Muslims responsible. Uh, for example, here's an Attorney General Ashcroft statement of uh, October 25, 2001. Um, he said, um, on September 11th, the wheel of history turned and the world will never be the same. The attacks of September 11th were acts of terrorism against America, orchestrated carry out by individuals living within our borders. Which of course is not true. Technically, they were unvisited Muslims, right? They weren't Arab or Muslim Americans. Today's terrorists enjoy the benefits of our free society as they commit themselves to plotting our destruction. They live in our communities, plotting, planning, and waiting to kill Americans again. Well, what does a statement like this do? It forces this fear in the public. It also says that they're here and they're among us, right? and they're plotting and they're planning. And if they're not plotting and planning, well, then they're secretly financing them, right? I mean, if you remember these were kind of stories like that. Uh, Ashcroft was very clear in his directive. He said, the federal government cannot fight this rate of terror alone. Every American must help us defend our nation against this enemy. So since terrorists were alleged to be inconspicuously residing in our communities, the message was clear. Arabs and Muslims of the United States should be closely watched. And their seemingly normal activities should be treated as suspect. And in fact, um, within one week of the attacks, Attorney General Ashcroft proudly announced that the government had received um, 96,000 tips, 96,000 <laughs> in one week about the suspicious behavior of Arab and Muslim. If that isn't proof <laughs> that there is a monolithic stereotype, I don't know what is. And, you know, the FBI then had to go follow up on every one of those, right? And what they turned out to be, somebody is opening their trunk too many times. This one's <laughs> gone to the mailbox too many times. Uh, you know, this one didn't wear a job and now she's wearing a job. This is really what was behind these calls. But you picture the scenario. The FBI then shows up at the house. The neighbors see the FBI at the house. It confirms, it confirms the idea that something suspicious is going on. Um, so I will, again, do just briefly, I'll just give you one of these quotes. Um, so here's one person I interviewed. He said, and I have to also admit it, when I go to bookstores, I'm really conscious now. Are they watching what I'm reading, what I'm buying, what I'm not? Why is my internet slow now? Is somebody monitoring what I'm reading? Uh, I never felt this way in America, never before. I would buy anything I wanted, go to a library, take out any books, discuss anything I wanted. After September 11th, I'm really weighing, really weighing my words before I talk. And 
and thinking about who I'm talking to and where I'm at. Um, another person said, no, I don't feel 100% safe at home. The reason for that is after 911, people who are just calling the FBI or other agencies, and all they have to say is, I think this guy is dot, dot, dot. Uh, I saw something. I think they're up to something. Um, well, I'll skip through this. Uh, with these new laws that came out after 911 and the federal government was like, gee, you could hang somebody for no reason. You talk about fear. These are people living in fear, right? Um, I think I have one more. Uh, well, anyhow, you get the flavor of that. Um, okay. So I talk about in the book how actually what the government has said helped keep this social construction going. Um, and then you have George W. Bush. Well, you know, he made this uh, much, uh, much acknowledged among some groups. Uh, statement at a mosque in Washington, D.C. Um, on uh, September 17th. He spoke with the Islamic Center and he, he talked about you know, Islam as a good religion. And he made a statement on September 20th to the American people. No one should be singled out for unfair treatment or unkind words because of their ethnic background or religious faith. That would seem to be an act of leadership saying, um, you know, we don't, we don't support profiling. <laughs> it would seem to be. Um, but then look at what the policies that that same government implemented. They were all profiling policies. Um, so again, you know, you can say a few words here and there, but your actions speak a bit louder than your words. Um, and then I have the speech here. Um, he, President Bush, more frequently made statements um, leveraging the pre-911 widely propagated notions that Muslims were a monolithic people who hate freedom and democracy. Right, so here's a quote from September 20th. Americans are asking, why do they hate us? They hate what they see right here in our chamber, democracy. Their leaders are self-appointed. They hate our freedoms. They hate our freedom of religion. They hate our freedom of speech. They hate our freedom to vote. So, you know, he's using these jingoisms all the time. Them, right, and they're all the same, and they all hate everything that we believe in. Um, so, um, yes. when more than a thousand Arab and Muslim men were picked up off the streets uh, and placed in extended incommunicado detention shortly after the attacks, Attorney General Ashcroft publicly announced the capture of more than 1,000 suspected terrorists. Again, all of these people were released. None of these people were ever found guilty of anything. Okay? Many of them were deported because their immigration status was out of order. But you can't be deported unless you're found not to be a suspected terrorist. Suspected terrorists, as you know, stay in jail. Um, but, you know, he would give these speeches about suspected terrorists. Um, I marked one here. I really think. Um, well, anyhow. They're in here. They're in here. Um, in the end, few terrorists posing a threat to the United States were actually uncovered. Out of 83,000 domestic special registrations, 5,000 preventive detentions, tens of thousands, some say hundreds of thousands of FBI interviews, um, uh, nobody. Nobody. Um, the U.S. government claimed to have broken up domestic terrorist cells in Lackawanna, Detroit, Portland, Seattle, and Northern Virginia, but none of these groups was ever proven to have any kind of plans to attack the United States. Um, I talk a bit more in the book about um, the Lackawanna case. So I'm going to skip this now. Criminal indictments in terrorism-related cases. This is all um, chapter three, so if you should this stuff, chapter three. Um, or four, of course. Um, there were more than 400 post-September 11th indictments for terrorism-related cases. There were 200 convictions, but only 39 of those convictions were for terrorism-related offenses. So we got 39 convictions on terrorism-related charges, and the average sentence was 14 days. So what does that tell you about 
what the conviction was for. This was a study done by a Syracuse uh, well-known place called Transactional Records and an Access Clearinghouse. So they, yeah, they weren't given all the information. So a lot of this stuff is still secret. But they were given enough cases that they could do this analysis, and they found the average sentence for a conviction was 14 days. So who knows what they were convicted of. Um, I, and I talk about how the government statements, nonetheless, and the things they were doing gave, I think it gave the American public, it's 